I made it to Tbilisi. And right here we have what looks like the biggest bicycle I've ever seen. And it's it's got two two handlebars going in opposite directions. Just tearing itself apart. Alright. What an epic ride and what a beautiful city just from the, the window of the bus. Now I gotta find my way to my hostel. It's called Fabric. I'm gonna go there and uh, check in. Let's go. That is the biggest bike I've ever seen. It's amazing. Incredible. They have a giant Ferris wheel on the side of this cliff. So I've heard really good things about Tbilisi, that it's an up-and-coming city, it's a digital nomad hub, it's a good place if you work online. The rent is very reasonable, and uh, there's a lot of fun things to do in the neighborhoods around the city, and we have a lot of nature just outside of the city too, for hiking, historical uh, places like monasteries. So I think I'm gonna spend about a month here and, and try to get some work done, try to rebuild my writing career again, work on my novel, Maybe go on a few dates. I can't wait. Wow. Incredible. Check this out. It's a hammer and sickle. Well, you know who built this bridge. It's really interesting though, because in the rest of Europe, they spent a lot of time destroying any legacy that the USSR, that the Soviet Union left on these countries. But here in Georgia, you can see there's a lot of Soviet architecture and a lot of uh, reminders of, of this empire that has since fallen. And uh, Russia is not the USSR. I know people are really mad at Russia. I'm. I'm not taking sides, you know, that's, this is a problem between governments and I think the people have nothing to do with it. But historically, I find the USSR super interesting. The architecture is so weird because they've got some classical, um, some classical styles, they've got Soviet styles, and then they have this hipster vibe where, where it's just cool at the same time. It's got a little bit of a Berlin feel and uh, I've just tasted it. I want to have the full course next. Don't worry everybody, they have McDonald's. And there's some promotion, promotion girls, I think. What is it? Gamarjoba, Gamarjoba, what is it? Uh, cool. Oh, Nadia, it's a dance, it's a belly dance. Yes. Okay. Belly. Arabic dance. Arabic dances, are you Arabic? No. No, you're Georgian? Yes. Okay. Cool, thank you. Uh, it looks like a strip club. I say they're they're very attractive people in a quirky way. The Georgians have like a quirky good look. I don't know how to describe it. It's not a traditional good look, but I am in a hipster city and Hipster people tend to have quirky, quirky looks. They have a, a unique sort of beauty. Quite often this leads to massive amounts of insecurity and uh, that combined with poor parenting leads them into a life of the arts. Not that I would know. 
used books. And uh, Tbilisi is famous for second-hand clothing stores. What a cool place. I feel like I'm in Montreal. Just uh, a weird mix of like authentic local people and super interesting looking tattooed hipsters. Yeah, so Fabric is is apparently one of the most famous, or probably the most famous hostel now here in Tbilisi. It's got a, a hip vibe, so I've heard. It's not the cheapest, but it's also not expensive. It's only 10 euros a night for the dormitory. Wow, look at this wall. Look at the iconography on the front of this hostel. It's very pagan. All right, let's go check in. Let's check this place out. Holy. I like it. And we have a bunch of bars down here. Now I'm going to go check out a famous sculpture on the outside of the city of Tbilisi called the Chronicle of Georgia. Let's go see what it's all about. One thing I've noticed about downtown Tbilisi and um, not just this neighborhood, but the entire city seems to be covered in graffiti. And not beautiful graffiti, but very amateurish tags. And uh, I'd love to say it's beautiful and adds an aesthetic, but I just find it rather tacky. This is the famous Georgian cheesy bread. I don't know what they're all named, but basically it's different types of, of bread with cheese. Uh, sometimes they have potatoes or meat or spinach inside of them, but usually cheese. All right, let's try this one. Mmm. Oh, it's so soft. It's very oily, but that just adds to the delicious flavor. And if you want to travel by metro within Tbilisi, you can buy one of these metro cards for about three lari or one euro. And a bus trip or a metro trip costs one lari, which is maybe 35 cents. Hello. Camera Goba. <laughs> yeah, so it's not expensive to go anywhere in the city. This guy asked me if I'm a YouTuber. Are you a YouTuber? Uh, yes. You also YouTube? Yes. Oh, what's your channel? Uh, no. You don't want to tell? Yes. <laughs> I don't want to talk. Oh, okay. He wants to do it old school. He wants to do it on his own. What's your channel name? Tony Travels. So the story behind these, these uh, metro entrances is that the Russian government apparently wouldn't give the Georgian government money to build these tunnels. So the Georgians said, hey, we need bomb shelters. And so the government gave them money to build bomb shelters and instead they built metro lines.
I really don't understand the bus system that well, so I'm just gonna get a, a Bolt, which is kind of like Uber. It's, an, it's a taxi app, essentially. But here you can see how people get around. They get around by city bus and by Marsha Chucha or something. I can't remember what they're called, but that's what they are. You gotta watch out with Bolt because it'll say one price and then when you finish your ride and you check what you got charged, it's often more of a suggestion than anything, which the cab drivers don't always agree with. So the Chronicles of Georgia was built in 1985 and it looks very, very Soviet. And I don't think it's exactly a Soviet structure because there is a lot of Christian iconography and the communists weren't necessarily so friendly to the Christians. But let's go take a look. Apparently it outlines the history of the country of Georgia. Well, look at this. We have a monstrosity of a megalithic structure here. Let's see if we can decipher it. These must be Christian kings, different kings, rulers of Georgia. I'm sure there's plenty of Illuminati influence going on here. Where do we start? Looks like we might have Adam over here, possibly. Adam hanging out with all the animals of Earth. Above that we have some wizards with a uh, sun, the moon, it looks like the zodiac signs underneath the kings. Oh, holy cow. We've got angels and devils. Here's Jesus. Looks like Jesus got got messed up by the Romans here and they're taking care of him. I have to say it's very impressive. I'm Georgian B-Boy. What's your name? Saza. Saza. B-Boy Skelet. B-Boy Skelet? Yeah. You on Instagram? Yeah. What is it? Where are you from? <laughs> I'm from Canada. In Algeria? Canada. Canada? Yeah. Uh, nice, nice. Yeah. Take a look at this lake. Hey, there's a beach down there. Well, would you look at that. I was gonna get a get a taxi up here, but then I thought it's only a half an hour walk, so I might as well be a little adventurous. We're gonna walk. We're gonna walk that way through this uh, park and over the hill into the city. What's this all about? Is it a castle? It's a mystery, a mystery room. That is dangerous. What the fuck? Right. 
We're not in Colombia anymore, kids. Well, what is it, a bomb shelter? You know me, I can't find a hole into the earth and not climb into it. It's just a toilet. I don't need to explore this. It's no Cappadocia, that's for sure. Check out these remnants of some ancient civilization. It's like a steampunk heaven. Ah, so I just got bit by a dog. A pack of dogs back there. They started barking and one of them ran up and gave me a nice, uh, nice nip on the leg. Fuck, I'll have to get my rabies shot now. They were just sitting there and he, they just started barking and he came up and got behind me and got me by the calf. There's a lot of stray dogs in Tbilisi, but they all have these tags on their ears, which means they've been uh, neutered at least. I don't know if they're vaccinated for diseases or anything. If I turn into a werewolf... Ah, there's worse fates than becoming a werewolf, isn't there? Wouldn't be so bad. Down at the bottom of the hill here, they have a beer stop. You know, it's like a beer station. I saw these guys pull in. I thought they were getting gas. They're getting beer. It's a beer station. One and a half liters. Just look at all the adventure you have when you skip out on taking a taxi. You find forest walks, underground caverns, vicious animal attacks, garbage men. Cars without front grills. Now here's a here's a good old Tbilisi playground that's seen better days. But it's got character. It's like something out of out of a horror movie, isn't it? Mommy, I want to go to the playground. Mm -hmm. So here's some vodka, huh? I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the vodka to clean my wound, and I'll get some uh, maybe a little for me too. And water keeps you from dying. All right, here's to the to the cute little dogs of Tbilisi. Until I find some soap, that'll have to do. You can get watermelon right here on the street. Melons. You can see all these buildings are run down, boarded up. You know, a lot of them need a paint job. They're missing windows. To Beastly, uh, Georgia is one of the most economically devastated countries in Europe, if not the world. Even though it's rich in agriculture, rich in natural resources with mountains and lakes, rivers, flood basins, a lot of fertile land. There's just a very high level corruption of corruption and 20% uh, of the country, and you'll never forget this because it's graffitied everywhere in the city. 20% of the country is owned by Russia. Good old Russia. Even though they're, they're brothers and sisters, people are friends with each other in between these two countries. They're related to each other. The governments have been at each other for 
hundreds if not thousands of years and so yeah they they haven't had a good run of luck when it comes to the economy to say the least <laughs> 